Hey, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use the query loop block inside of Generate Blocks. So on your screen, we're looking at a basic example of a query loop. And what's happening is that particular element is bringing in posts from my website that are categorized as press releases. Now this is just done on a regular WordPress page and I'll show you how we build it from the ground up. And to make sure we're on the same page here, when I go to my posts here in the back end, you can see we have a number of different categories. We have history, education, press releases, and some others. And what I've done on that page is bring in only the posts from that press releases category. So this is actually quite easy to do and we can make this even more dynamic in a later video. Query loops are something that you'll find yourself using a lot once you understand them and what you can do with them is really, really powerful. We're gonna keep today's video pretty simple. So what I'll do is go ahead and just edit the page that I've created called press releases. Now, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and drop in a generate blocks container element. And then I'm going to click this button here that says add inner container, which just restricts the content to page width for me, which is really nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and in the generate blocks pattern library, I'm gonna bring in a query loop that we can start with. Now, whether you use the pro or the free version, you can see that there are query loops available for us. So I'll go ahead and just filter down to these and let's grab something that we wanna use here. Okay, so I think I found the one that I wanna use, which is query loop number five. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. And you can see we have a pretty good starting place right out of the gate here. So you might wanna say, you know, something like read our current PRs or whatever you might call it. And then down here, let's actually take a look at the kind of construction of the query loop. So when you add the query loop to your page, you'll see that we have the actual element itself. And then there's the grid that lays out the posts. If we expand that a little bit further, we have the actual post template here. And what you're doing is building the layout for one post in this loop, and then that replicates to all of the other ones. So you can see that despite the fact that there are three visible posts right here, we are only able to edit the content for one because any changes that you make to this one post will apply to any others inside of this query loop. So there's a bunch of really cool stuff happening here. So inside of this, we have the list of terms and in the back end, it doesn't quite look right, but when we go to the front end, we'll see it's all working. Then we have a generate blocks headline and what's taking place on this particular element. If we scroll down to the dynamic data section, we can see that it has enabled dynamic data turned on. It's saying data source of the current post from inside of our query loop. It's asking us the content source, which in this case, of course, is the title, but you can see there's tons of other options to pick from. And then also the link source is single post. So what that means is it's going to take you to that individual post when you click on this headline element. Then we also have another headline element here that's bringing in our post excerpt, exactly the same idea. So current post, content sources excerpt, and then there's a couple of other options here specifically for the excerpt. And then the image is brought in in exactly the same way. So we're using a generate blocks image element, the data source of current post, image source in this case a featured image, and then link source again, if we click on the image, it's gonna take us to that single post. So let's change a little bit of the styling here. So if I select this post template, then the first thing that I'm gonna do here is gonna go ahead and click on this GBP card border. Then under the borders, it's gonna have this one pixel black border. Maybe that's a little bit too dark for our use case. Maybe we could just go with something a little bit lighter and you could even turn down the contrast here, maybe 50% opacity. Then let's say you want a border radius on all corners of something like eight pixels and just kind of round out the corners as you can see. And then maybe what we want here is a little bit of a box shadow effect. So if I pop this in, Maybe let's make it a little bit softer. So X and Y of zero, a blur of 10 and a spread of zero. And then you could adjust the box shadow color. You know, you can see kind of how it spreads here. Let's just make it really subtle. Typically the combination of a light border and a box shadow is more than enough. So 10% like that. And then let's say you don't actually want this to be three cards in a row. Maybe you want them to be two in a row. So what we need to do is go back out of our global style we can go to the block settings and we can see grid item width. Now this is currently visible because I'm clicking on post template. If I go to grid, we're gonna see that the layout that it's showing us here is the actual space between each grid item rather than the individual width of the card itself. So, you know, if I change this from 32 to 24, we can see it kind of shrinks a little bit. 
But what we actually wanna do in this case is take the post template and we'll click this to 50%. And now we can see that we have those two posts side by side. And of course you can change this to be whatever you want. If you want four wide, 25%, you get the idea. Now I've just noticed one thing here and with this particular layout, I set that border radius, but it applied to the bottom left and right edges of the card, but not the top. And that's because we have this image at the top. So what I wanna do is click on the image and then I'm gonna to go to the border section, border radius, top left and top right of eight pixels. And then we have that rounded effect on all sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and update this and let's open our press releases page in a new tab here. And there we go. So we now have our query loop that we pulled out of the pattern library, did a little bit of customization, and this looks really good. But of course we're on this press releases page and we're getting posts from education, history, and so on. And that's not what we wanted. So let's actually go back to our edit screen here and we're gonna go to the query loop. And this is where we can dictate the parameters of what posts should appear, their order, and a variety of other things. In a future video, we're gonna take a look at this button that says inherit query from template. We're not gonna worry about that today. Instead, what we're gonna do is make sure that our correct post type is selected. So we're just going to use our default WordPress posts. You can see post per page of three means that only three of these posts are going to appear at once before there needs to be buttons, you know, next page and so on. So let's go ahead and turn that up to something like maybe nine. And you can see right away, the changes are reflected here for us, which is great. Now we're gonna add another parameter here. We're gonna select query parameter. There's tons and tons of options here, but we're gonna go down to taxonomies. Taxonomies is gonna allow us to pick from either categories or tags. So when we click that, then you can see it switches to taxonomies and it asks us, which one do you want to pull from? Now we're using the default WordPress category, so that's what we're going to select. And then generate blocks will find all of the available categories for us, which we can then pick from in this dropdown. Now, of course, in our case, we're gonna choose press releases. We're going to update this. And again, let's go refresh on the front end. Now we can see that only posts that are inside of that press releases category pop up. In this case, one that is in both education and press releases appears. And then of course we can just keep scrolling and now we're only gonna find posts that are in that press releases category, which is of course exactly what we wanted. Now, one thing we can do here is make some changes on hover. So maybe we make the box shadow of the whole card here a little bit more intense whenever you hover over it. So let's go back to our query loop. So again, I wanna select my post template from the document overview here. And I didn't mention this already, but if you don't have that sidebar expanded, you definitely should. It's so much easier to navigate around when this is open. So what I'll do again is return to the global style that we had before, the GBP card border, or we can create our own, but we can just go ahead and do it here for demonstration's sake. So then we could switch to the hover state and then for our effects, we could go to box shadow. And before we had it as 0, 0, 10, 0. So maybe I'll go something like 0, 4, 10, and 0 like that. And then maybe we'll take the opacity up from 10% to something like 20%. Let's go ahead and update this. And we'll take a look on the front end. And then when I hover, you can see that that box shadow increases just a little bit. Nice little indication that something has happened here and you're hovering over that card. One final thing we could do to make this nice and smooth is we could go back to our main state here and we can add a transition, change this duration to something like 0.1, update this, and then we'll have a nice little hover effect. You can see the box shadow fades in and out rather than it just instantly appearing and disappearing. So as you can see, it's really simple to build a query loop that shows exactly the posts that you need and you can take one from the Generate Blocks pattern library and make it look much more fitting to your particular design needs. So we've covered a lot in this video, bringing the query loop in, how to configure what categories are shown on it, walking through the dynamic data options that have been pre-configured for you. In the next video, we're gonna make this query loop more dynamic, which makes it more flexible and automatically pull in posts from the current category, which is really awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.